Hey guys, this is Muhab, and in this video we're going to talk about the signs and indicators of a market bubble and then we're going to discuss if we are currently in one or not. As always, before we start, grab your cup of coffee, smash the like button and let's roll the intro. For the past 400 years we've seen many bubbles and from these bubbles we deduced the signs and indicators. Bubbles like the tulip bubble in the Netherlands where at the height of the bubble tulips sold for approximately 10,000 guilders which is equal to the value of a mansion on the Amsterdam Grand Canal at the time. Insane. We also have the South Sea bubble which Sir Isaac Newton invested in it and lost the equivalent of more than 3 million dollars of today's money. He even said that he, quote, could calculate the motions of the heavenly bodies, but not the madness of the people, end quote. For the rest of his life, he forbade anyone to speak the words South Sea in his presence. We also have many bubbles that occurred in the US too, like the US.com bubble that bursted back in 2001, and the housing bubble that bursted in the 2006-2008 market crash. Finally, I would like to also mention one last bubble, which is arguably the largest stock market bubble ever, which is the Kuwaiti's Sugil Manakh stock bubble in the early 1980s. Back then, some stocks were advancing 100% per month, with some even advancing tenfolds, and one stock, the Gulf Company for Industrial Development, even advanced 15-fold. It's 15x in a matter of a month. Just imagine that, like people wait for 20-30 years to 15x their money, and some people literally did that in a month who invested in that company. Insane. The combination of extreme stock gains and astronomical amounts of leverage made many speculators, millionaires, and billionaires many times over. But when the bubble bursted, approximately 29,000 checks amounting to $93 billion were estimated to have been written against the shares of companies that were pretty much worthless. $93 billion at the time, can you imagine that? It's, it's an insane amount of money. The final result of the world's greatest speculative mania was a loss equivalent to $90,000 for every Kuwaiti man, woman, and child. So just imagine waking up one day and then you find $90,000 in debt under your name just because some people were speculating and you're not really responsible of it. But it's, it's just the equivalent of that. I would love to talk more about it in details, but that's not the purpose of the video. Business Casual made a great video about Sugil Manakh bubble. If you're interested in more detail about it, I'll make sure to leave the link for it in the description below. But now let's go back to the video's topic and talk more about the signs and indicators that always get repeated in every bubble. First, we see the human behavior dominates any asset fundamentals in investing. Things like greed and FOMO start becoming the main driver of either buying or selling. And we saw that in many assets like in Bitcoin back in 2018 and the 2001 market crash where some companies reached insane valuations when they was not even making any profits and some even didn't have any realized revenue, only empty promises. Yet people were still buying these companies in the hope that it will go up because everything is going up and we should buy everything that goes up. <laughs> so when you see people buying an asset and their only reason is that it will keep on going up because it was going up for so long, then you need to be very cautious. Next, we start seeing that companies that barely touch the economy get huge valuations while the market cap of companies that have direct impact on the economy falls. Also, these companies become the hot stock. You'll hear people saying, this stock is going to double in valuation in a week's time, you gotta buy it. The best example about this is when you compare Zoom's video communications market cap with Boeing, Ford, Delta Airlines, or any other company that hires a lot of people and have direct impact to the US economy. Zoom's market cap is $71 billion at the time of recording this video. That is the equivalent of General Motors, Ford, and Fiat Chrysler's market cap combined. Zoom's market cap is larger than the top 7 US airlines too, just imagine that. In contrast, Zoom has just over 2,500 employees, where only Ford has almost 200,000 employees. In the past 6 months, Zoom's market cap almost 4 x It quadrupled in a matter of 6 months, and that gave it a PE ratio of 1,500. Imagine, a PE ratio of 1,000. 500. So for every $1,500 you invest in the company, you're expecting a dollar back this year. On average, the Nasdaq, Dow Jones, and the S&P 500's PE ratio is around 20 to 25 and maybe even less. Now there's no doubt that the company has grown insanely this year as a result of the pandemic. 
However, I'm not sure if it deserves its $73 billion market cap. Next, we start seeing investors buying the wrong stock. So they buy a stock thinking it's another stock and then that stock they bought, which is not the company they originally wanted to invest in, start jumping in price due to many people buying that stock, which is the wrong stock. Then when other retail investors see that the stock is jumping in price, which is again the wrong stock, they start to FOMO and buying that stock thinking it's the right stock when it's not. Okay, that's so confusing Mohab, can you give us an example? Sure. Let's go back to Zoom Video Conference Company. The ticker symbol of that company is ZM. While there's another company out there called Zoom Technologies with a ticker symbol ZOOM. And guess what happened? People started investing in Zoom Technologies rather than Zoom Video Conference. As a result, Zoom Technologies or the fake Zoom, not the video conference one, not the one that we use in daily, the other company that no one knows about, which I call the fake Zoom, went up nearly 900% year to date. 900% in 6 months. What the f***? Eventually, the SEC suspended trading in the securities of the fake Zoom because of concerns about the adequacy and accuracy of publicly available information concerning the fake Zoom, including its financial condition and its operations. So not only people were investing in the wrong company, but that wrong company may potentially be permanently delisted if it was found out that they were playing with their financial sheets. Although according to CNBC, it got temporarily delisted partly because investors were confusing it with Zoom video. Another indicator we see is that professional investors start achieving less profits than people who have no idea what they're doing in the stock market. And I'm not talking about beginners, I'm talking about people who literally have no idea what he or she is doing, yet you can see him or her achieving 100-200% in profits in a matter of weeks. You see people like Warren Buffett, who's arguably the best investor of all time. His company, Berkshire Hathaway, lost $50 billion in Q1 of 2020. In addition, there is also the billionaire investor ICANN who sold all of his Hertz shares and lost more than $1.6 billion. On the other hand, you see people like Dave Portnoy who started day trading to substitute for the lack of sport gambling as a result of the lockdown and he made $5 million which is approximately 5% of his net worth. He literally has in his Twitter caption not to trust anything he says about stocks. However, unfortunately, many people started to day trade and gamble as a result of the lockdown and they lost tons of money. Personally, there was this person who DM'd me on Instagram and said that he lost almost $5,000 and he needed that money and he doesn't know what to do. When I asked him for the reason behind buying that certain stock which made him lose his money, he told me he saw the stock going up so he decided to buy which is obviously the wrong reason to buy a stock. Next, bragging gets spread out. People start bragging a lot, especially those people we talked about who had no idea what they're doing, yet they achieve 100 to 200% in profits in a matter of weeks. You'll see them bragging all over the place and oh, look at me, I made 50% profit in a week and all that stuff. And some of them will start making courses and ask you to buy their course when themselves they barely have any experience in the stock market. You'll see people like Dave Portnoy, the same guy who was gambling in the market that we just talked about a few minutes ago, mocking Warren Buffett. The bragging level drastically increases when we're in a bubble. And the braggers' voices get so loud to a level where you'll find people who advise you to get into the stock market and they know nothing about the stock market. Maybe you'll even see your grandmother starting advising you to get into the stock market. Or a person who has nothing to do with the market or or like investing sometimes and yet you'll see them urging you to buy stocks today before tomorrow because there are stocks that are doubling and you're missing out and maybe himself he's not even in the stock market the sixth indicator is that people start intentionally buying garbage stocks and that's a funny indicator because people know for a fact that this is a trash company and even the people who invest in it know that it's a trash stock but since the stock keeps going up and everyone who invests in the stock says that the person who's gonna buy the stock from me is the one that's going to experience the huge loss people keep on buying that trash stock and it keeps going up and we're currently seeing this with companies that filed for bankruptcy like Hertz Hertz filed for bankruptcy and the stock went up and at the time I wrote the script for this video I initially wrote quote to be honest Hertz is the only company that I personally know of that filed for bankruptcy and its stock price went up but if that becomes a trend and we see more companies who file for bankruptcy experience a jump in the stock price because people are buying it that means people are going crazy 
end quote. And guess what, at the time of recording this video, we saw that trend happening with more stocks like GNC. People buy into a stock when they hear it's going bankrupt like it's a good news. There is even a company called Wirecard that was a fraud. The CEO was arrested and there were 2 billion dollars missing and at some point the stock went up by 30% a few days ago. I'm speechless, that's insane. Thankfully it went down back again by a good 60% but the fact that it went up in the first place is insane by itself. The seventh indicator is that we start seeing the media praising or at least talking about non-professionals who manage to make hundreds of thousands and start attacking professional investors. And we saw that with the praise of Dave Portnoy when he made millions day trading and the underestimation of the capability of long-term investors like Warren Buffett when he sold his airline stocks. Finally, there is one last very clear indicator, and we're very lucky to be living in a time where Warren Buffett is still alive. In every single bubble, the media starts to attack Warren Buffett. Once the media starts to talk about his wrong decisions or investments that he lost money in in an exaggerated way, then know that we're either in a bubble or we're entering one soon. It happened in the 80s, in 2001 and 2008 too. So if you see the media starts to underestimate Warren Buffett or attack him due to his current losses, be very careful with the assets you own, the economy you're in, and the market you're dealing with. Surprisingly, most of these indicators are appearing now as I explained in the few examples I gave. And that is very surprising because we are seeing these bubble signs just after a huge drop in the market that happened as a result of a pandemic that happens once in a hundred years. Who would have thought that would be the case? We'll soon see whether we are actually in a bubble that's going to burst soon or the feds printed so much money that the dollar is worth much less than it was before the pandemic which makes the stock market fairly valued or maybe even we'll be fine, the dollar will be as valuable as it was before the pandemic and the stock market won't drop in price. It's the feds, they can create money out of nothing and buy whatever they want. All jokes aside though, it's really hard to know exactly what's going to happen in the near future. A lot of things are rapidly changing. The best advice I can give you is that make sure you have emergency fund, invest consistently and don't worry about all of the weird news out there. Timing the market was always a losing strategy. On the other hand, if you're more of a professional investor who buys individual stocks, especially long term GARP investors out there, make sure to stick to your strategy and don't gamble. When you see people who know nothing about the market making hundreds of percents in profits, you'll start questioning yourself. However, remember this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's about who makes more money in 10, 20, 30 years from now, not 2-3 months. Stay focused and do your best. Alright guys, that's the end of the video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure to write them in the comments below. I'll make sure to reply as soon as possible. And feel free to watch more of my videos by clicking on the cards in front of you. Thank you for watching. This is Muhab and I'm signing out.